if you said to me and Kofi, like, I don't like dressing like a basketball player, but yeah. in the last couple of, like, a basketball player, but in the last yeah. couple of years, basketball players haven't been dressing like basketball players. Yeah. But I mean, like, look at how James Harden dresses before a game. With this one, you got to let the, the jacket, jacket do this. The jacket does all the talking. Right. All the talking. Get out the way. Russell Westbrook, Kelly Oubre. Like, Kelly Oubre looks more like a X game skater before the game. Yeah. But he's an NBA player, so you really can't tell him he's not a basketball player. He's one of the best in the world. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I take pride in not dressing like a basketball player and being a part of that change of being yourself, whatever that looks like. Do you know what I mean? That's the whole aim, really, isn't it? Like just to be yourself. And the thing is, the thing is about being yourself is like I don't know why. Maybe it's the psychology side of me, but which like it intrigues me, but people do not do well with change and especially change within themselves because like it's okay <clears throat> to be how you are right now and be a different version of yourself in a year's time. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. there's times when I used to dress hella baggy, right. all my clothes didn't fit. Then I went through a phase where all my clothes were like more like fitted. Now it's more of a different style, like it's okay, be yourself, and there's going to be different versions of yourself, do you know what I mean? Because you're forever yeah. evolving, you're forever going through stuff, you're forever learning. So, like, being yourself, I think is just dope because there's an evolution in some sense, do you know what I mean? And yeah. I think in this, in the British basketball culture, we're not very good with change at all, whether on the court or off the court. Yeah not very good with change and I think the younger generation are mm. in terms of because their life changes so much all the time there's a new app there's a new this there's a new that like their life just consists of change so because they're going to be the future and they actually do do pretty well with change um I think we should learn from them definitely it's funny you should say that because there was um I don't know if you watch um Drew Lasker's um, BBL show podcast. They, they, they had one tonight um, that they recorded with Mike Tuck at the Sheffield game. And one of his little segments that he does, he brings up sort of what's been going on on social media. And he brought up the guy that does all the commentating for the Eagles, a guy called Jeff King. And he said, uh, Jeff King had said um, that the, you know, the, that player, man, that went viral, that the, the guy who plays for the Giants when he threw the ball off the backboard. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he'd commented saying that it was disrespectful to the opposing team um, that 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 Green had done this, and I was like, it feels very much that that's an old guard type of way of looking at it. Because no one thought it was disrespectful when Trace McGrady threw it off the backboard in the All Star game. You know the MVP stuff. That's for everybody else. What did you think of that one there, Tracy? Man, you are talking to me. I'm missing the game. Michael, thank you for your time. So another fan talking about, oh, um, fans need to not boo the other team. Yeah, yeah. You should be respectful of the other team. Fan, this is British basketball at men, senior level, elite. If you can't handle it, get a grip, go support some children's basketball because the amount of us players who are the ones being booed, yeah. are like, no, 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 keep it. We like it, do you know what I mean? And I also expect my fans to boo the other team's fans, and yeah. I expect the other team's fans to boo me. It's a part yeah. of it. It's a love-hate relationship, and the same fans that were booing me, if I end up signing to your team, and you're now cheering for me, it's a part of the game, do you know what I mean? And respectfully, play a bit of defense so we can't throw it off the backboard and go dunk it. That's like a player going for 50 or hitting hella threes. You don't say to the player, oh, yeah. don't hit more threes, don't hit, don't hit, don't play your game because the other team can't guard you. Respectfully, maybe you shouldn't be on the floor then if you can't handle it. No, I think that's, uh, no, I mean, it's a, it's a fair point. But I think when, when I saw that, that when you were saying there about fear and change in the league, and in, I think in this country in general, any time that anyone comes in, whether it's to sport or to politics or whatever, to try and s try something new, like mm -hmm. 
as a society, we just go, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, well, not everyone, but the, the British stiff up our lip type of thing mm-hmm. is to just go, no, this is different. I don't like this. You know, people fear Americanizing. And again, I don't like using that word, but like you look at the, at the NBA and like, I know there's a thing with American fans being different than our fans and stuff like that, but like you see some amazing environments and atmospheres in the States as you do across Europe. Um, you know, in this country, it's just so plastic. As you said in that tweet the other week, it's so weak. Like, mm-hmm. you know, um, I was at the 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 Lions Eagles game a couple of weeks ago, and I was sitting next to these two older guys, and they were just like complaining every time the buzzer went off because it was too loud, or you know, when the drum was banging and shouting defense. You think, well, if if, if you don't like it, don't come to a basketball game. Like, yeah, I mean, it's that's all basketball games ain't even rowdy like that. Mm. So go to the Piarcos Panathinaikos game where you've got flipping fa- flares being yeah. shot drums, stones, they're moving crazy. It's like, you've got one side of British basketball talking about yeah, we want to be more like Europe, and they move crazy, yeah. but then you've got the other side who are like, oh, the buzz is too loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you, like, what do you want? And then you've got a certain side talking about, oh, we want more money in the, in the sport, and it needs to go out wider, but then you've got other people who don't want to be a part of helping it grow wider or if there's yeah. any ideas they're shooting them down like make up your minds that's when i said when i put in a tweet british basketball is an inbred culture people tried to come for me and i had i had i had my reasons yeah if they don't like it that's what it is but we just want to keep it within ourselves but our sport's not big enough to keep within ourselves yeah. football is when you've got sixty thousand people going to one match you can you can you can kind of keep it within yourself because yeah. it's so many people and that's just the people that are at the game. Do you know what I mean? Not just yeah. the fans. Um, it, you can keep it within because there's, it's so big, but we're not big like that. So we need other people. We need more people to love our sport. We need people to buy into it. We need people to be aware of it. Yeah. The people that are next to the uh, National Basketball Performance Center, where I go all the time, that don't know that it's a National Basketball Performance Center. Yeah. This is where GB play, <laughs> England, 3x3, Manchester Giants, school games, Aspire, all of that. And people next door don't even know that what this building is. If anything, they know more about the Speedway, which is yeah. next to it. Like, do you think that's a, an ignorance or do you think it's a, just a lack of awareness? Lack of awareness because me with modeling, this is, this is where everything started for me. Once I left basketball and I started modelling, I remember I'm modelling all over the country. I'm in Plymouth, I'm in Scotland, um, everywhere in between. And people are saying to me, oh, you're tall, you should play basketball. What do you what, what do? You do? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a professional basketball player. Oh, for who? England, Great Britain. Yeah. Oh, didn't know we had a team. Yeah. I've been on BBC enough times in my career. So for people who are not already in the basketball scene to not even be aware, not aware of me, Kofi the individual, but, but what I represent, yeah. to me, the issue, because I've been playing for 20 years, how yeah. are you, how, like, no, they don't say that about netball. They don't say that, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. they don't do that about certain other sports. And I just think, I try not to take it as a slap in the face, but I take it as a slap in the face to the coach that I represent. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because they know about the NBA. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not their ignorance to basketball. They're aware of basketball, just not ours. That's the thing that bugs me, is that you'll see plenty of people, hundreds in the course of a week, walking around in Lakers or Nets jerseys. Um, and you say, oh, do you like uh, basketball? What? Uh, but I just, do you know what I mean? They've got no idea. Or if you say, if they do know what basketball is, and you go, Oh, do you watch the Eagles or do you watch the Lions? Who? Like, mm-hmm. there's just no. I think it'll it'll probably change with the Lions and and some it of the, like the, the teams. Lions. It won't be like that for the Lions for long. People you know, will think? be aware. Yeah, I think people will start to be aware. They won't be aware of the on the only small byproducts of them knowing about the league is them knowing of what the Lions playing or yeah. whatever because the Lions are taking 
are making an effort to be known yeah. in basketball, outside of basketball. Like, they want to be known because that's where the bread is. Yeah. I mean, you've got more bread, you've got more opportunities. And they've already got long, though, as we already know. But they're, they're trying to get a EuroLeague team in London. Like, and yeah. the EuroLeague would like <laughs> a team in London because if we think about life in general, like, not basketball, London is a huge yeah. market in the world for for so many things you know what i mean so if 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 we're switched on enough to use what london is doing then we can grow the whole culture yeah you can grow the whole thing you know what i mean but i don't really feel like it's a priority and if you're thinking long term you end up you end up um winning overall like who really who really cares about BBL trophy, BBL cup, BBL anything. Like, imagine you're an investor though. You're yeah. a business. What does like? <laughs> oh, so like, if you're an investor, you don't really know about basketball. We can't we can't count the people who love the game and kind of want to be a part of the, B- the BBL. Yeah, the people who don't know anything about basketball that just have money who just want to invest. Do they care about the BBL trophy or if you won or you didn't? Nah, it just yeah. it means nothing. It means absolutely nothing. They can, they're gonna look on Instagram, they're gonna look at whatever you've built yeah. and say and go off of that. They don't care that you you guys got to the final last five yeah. years. Not really. Do you know what I mean? Not not really. So, I would probably go to like to the extent that when you, I know you, you say investors, do they care? Honestly, I would go as far as to say that the league themselves probably don't care. For the simple reason, like, I mean, my background's in sort of marketing and stuff, and um, I didn't even know that the game that we were playing against Plymouth the other week was the BBL Cup. It just looked like the BBL. There was, like, you, and I don't like use football as an example, but the Premier League has its own branding. The FA Cup has its own branding. The League Cup has its own branding. Now, that's not, doesn't come down to funding. That's a graphic designer designing different logos and different brand identities for each, for the league, for the cup, and for the trophy. And they haven't even done that. It's just like, well, it comes across just like they don't care. So I guess they don't care. Investors aren't going to care. For real. And we're not big enough to not care about investors and people wanting to bring money. It's one thing. I had this meeting with Basketball England. I told them the same thing as well. It's one thing us fighting off investors so like we're the premiership and everyone wants to get their marketing and be a part of manchester city Mm. that's different you can be like no 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 Mm, you're more better suited okay we'll look into it it's not that with basketball if anything we're begging for investors so you need to package the shit in gold as best as you can so if you if you can package it right to an investor, then they can be like, okay, cool, your business plan, everything looks really good. Then you bring it to a game and you do a really good performance. Your team, you've recruited well, you guys perform well. People in the crowd who they're listening to have an enjoyable time. You're like, okay, you've packaged the shit on the outside in gold, but you're also taking care of the inside. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that way, I think it will grow. There's so many, there's so many ways that we can help be a part of the change of growing British basketball culture. And I don't care about the BBL. I don't care about individual leagues because it's all connected. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We, we should want kids in year seven wanting to play in the BBL. When, yeah. I, was, I, was, when I was like 12, 13, I was going with Stephen Hansel to watch Birmingham Bullets games. I'm watching Rob Patanastro run the one with his headband. I'm watching Yorick Williams shoot every jump shot under the sun. I'm like, yo, I just want to get to the stage where I can be the mascot. Yeah, yeah. I want to walk around in the big red bulldog. Then I'm like, oh, hopefully one day I can make the team. I'm not thinking about NBA. Yeah. You know what I mean? And when you, when you have people from young have that kind of mindset, they're going to work harder because from young, they're rated, they respect the league. Yeah. These guys don't care now. They're like, what? If anything, 
if all else fails, then I'll play in the BBL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the BBL doesn't even suck. And I've played in it multiple years. The competition, <laughs> we've got hoopers. Yeah. We have got hoopers. So it's not even that. It's it's the respect and the way it's packaged, which makes it somewhat shoddy. Even teams around Europe and that. It's like, are we are we that surprised that Percy, uh, Parker Jackson Cartwright played well in the BBL? He's in the Euro League now. Yeah, yeah. He's in the Euro League and he's doing work. He left here and he went to France. He's gone everywhere and he's played well. He played well here too, but he wasn't like... Getting the opportunities. He was, yeah, it wasn't like he was LeBron James and we had everyone else was crap. Yeah. We had other hoopers who definitely can hold their own. So when we see guys go to other leagues around the world and play well, people are like, oh, he played in the BBL. It's like, bro, we've got hoopers here. Yeah. But even from their point of view, they're like, mm, I don't know. Do you think that'll change now that with a salary cap that's been lifted? Does that affect the whole league though? Or does it just affect the teams that can manage um, to get money? I got the impression it was the whole league. Yeah, I hear you. But when I say affect the whole league, Removing a salary cap for a team that can't get investors. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. London Lions. <laughs> it suits them, yeah. You get more investors. Yeah. The salary cap definitely benefits you because you can pay guys fifty k a month. Yeah. A team who can't get investors having no salary cap really doesn't make a difference. You're not paying yeah. your players that much difference. Do you know what I mean? You can't really get that far better players because you haven't got the money for it. And I guess, I guess again, just going back to what you were saying before, the whole thing of packaging it up, like if you follow football or any other sport, like when the likes of Man United and Chelsea started getting money, then all these other teams, all these other investors, sorry, started looking at other teams to say, well, I want a piece of that. And then the whole Premier League is growing and growing. I don't honestly think that there's a future of the BBL without that happening very quickly, like because the people that are in there now, and I mean this with the greatest amount of respect, are, are, haven't got deep enough pockets. Like Lions have, we know that, you know, Glasgow, um, not Glasgow, Caledonia, they've got deep pockets now, the Riders. But you look at clubs like Newcastle, which are, a, are my team, um, that are, do amazing work in the community, but as far as the team goes, like mm. they don't have deep pockets. and. I don't see how they're going to get deeper pockets in any other way other than investors. And if the investors don't see the packaged mm-hmm. stuff like you were saying there, it's just going to, or we're going to start seeing more teams go out of business because they can't afford to compete with the Lions. And, you know, it's, it's tough. Like Newcastle's Arena, love it. It's one of my favorite places to play yeah. ever. Love to play there. The fan support's crazy. The building's crazy. The city's nice. People are very nice. Like, love it. But if you're like, that's the thing. We need to start thinking like people who are not, who are not connected to the sport, yeah. and we need to package it for them. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you can't manage to package it, which is great, so that investors want to give up their money and want to be a part of it, then you're gonna have to look for other other people yeah. to package it for. And I guarantee, if you package it and get hella people in then if you manage to get the investor in, they might look at it and be like, mm, okay, as I was walking in, there was 200 people outside that couldn't get in. Mm. Huh. Maybe there's something here. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. Newcastle already have got the look of stuff. They may not have the deep pockets, but it looks very packaged. Yeah, Do you yeah. know what I mean? Social media, you might need to uptick it a little bit, but to investors who are not a part of basketball, I don't really feel like they're that clued up. They're smart yeah. business-wise. They're not smart basketball-wise. And you can actually take that kind of ignorance in our favour, but only yeah. if we're going to put in the work because they can invest for a year. But in that year, they're going to learn about basketball. And if yeah. you're doing shit, they're pulling that investment. In, and the way it should go is... You want their investment to help you get more investment. Yeah, yeah. Thinking like from a business head, not a sports head, not a basketball head, not a community head. Because respectfully, community is not bringing in the, the dough. It's yeah. not for elite level sport. 
You think Manchester City, Arsenal, or them guys, their sports being funded by the community? It ain't. Mm. Whether we like it or not, yeah, we want to make sure the kids, we want to make sure the deprived families, all that. We do. They need to be in there. But they're not the ones with the dough. Yeah. You need to be with the dough as well. So do you think that we're going to see a shift, a, 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 a massive shift in the BBL over the next couple of years? Or do you think it's falling on deaf ears? Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh no it's funny obviously I'm not playing right now and I can't be silenced but I I just don't know I feel like it's such a the people in charge like even the whole infrastructure to me just seems weird like mm. like in any business in the world that's a business if if your employees have an issue and need HR who did, like, who did they go to? There's always a department, right? Yeah. In, in basketball, let's say the players have an issue. Who's our HR department? Probably the same person we've got an issue with. Who do you go to as an employee? Is you see what no, I mean? Is there no HR in basketball? Like, What? You see what I mean? <laughs> I may have just oh. said something completely ridiculous. <laughs> oh, 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 God. <laughs> Boy, when I say that's <laughs> quite like when a lot of the fans talk about British players, yeah, and a lot of stuff that goes on, I think it's absolutely ridiculous and extremely unfair because they only know what the clubs show them. Yeah. Because don't get it twisted, players are being silenced by clubs. Yeah. You can't post this, you can't do that, you'll get fired, you'll this, you'll that. Mate, you're not even your own person. Then you got your agent who really in contract with the team because he wants to keep a relationship with the team because he can get more players to that team and make more money from his commission but you're not you're like if you're supposed to be an employee keep it 100 and let me be an employee aka the infrastructure needs to support me as an employee and it it doesn't always like rarely so i think when we're talking about would the league make strides on the outside probably yeah insides I doubt it because it's getting the fundamentals and the infrastructure, as you say, to support the growth that is needed rather than focusing on the on the money and then when the product itself isn't what it should be. The thing is, are we even focusing on the money? We're not focusing on yeah, true. the foundation and we're not focusing on the money either. So that's why I say it's a glorified community league. Mm. That's how it somewhat comes across from for the majority. Certain certain teams run very professional and it comes across like that. But I hear like the BBL is just a culmination of teams that vote between each other. Like who do they answer to? True. Really? And it's not even like a players association or anything like that, is there? What's going on? There isn't a player association. You got players that have got mental health issues who are going through it. You got teams who are moving crazy out here. You've got and the thing with like a lot of basketball contracts as well, they're very grey area. They're not black and white. You sign your job, a regular job, your contract's very black and white. Anything yeah. that's not stated, you can do what you want and there should be no yeah. penalties. Basketball contracts between August and May, nah, your you you your soul belongs to them. If they decide on a on your day off that the children's hospital has flipping call up and said they need some players. Yeah, you're supposed to get one day off a week. Coach is calling you saying, yo, you're going. And if you if you have a qualm with that, ah, you break you in breach of contract. Really? Now you look at that contract, looking at it saying, where does it say in there? Yeah, that yeah. This was in there, but you're just creating this thing of if you don't do it, you're breaching a contract and you're just like, bro, modern day slavery, somewhat. And then a lot of people are gonna go, oh, if you don't like it, don't play. You're telling people who have spent 15 to 20 years grafting on something. Yeah. You, you you don't like something at work. You've been there six months. You ain't ready to give it all up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about? Guess, you wonder why players go abroad. And when you put it like that, you know, you've got these established clubs who know how to do things right abroad. And then you've got, as you say, the 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 lack of support, the lack of infrastructure, the lack of I guess knowing what the hell is the right thing to do 
going on in this country than that you, you almost don't blame players for wanting to go abroad. Yeah, you know to be mean? honest, it can go any which way abroad. <laughs> like it can, it can definitely. It can go go there, like that's the thing. Abroad is just huge. It's just not here, not in the UK. Do you know what I mean? They've got professional basketball everywhere, and the yeah. thing with professional basketball is. Like in this league, you you might be at a very professional environment, or you cannot be at a very professional environment, all in the same league. Do you know what I mean? So it's more yeah. so you go into a specific team that yeah. does things right, rather than a specific league. I'd say. Um, but yeah, I know players that I've I've like remembered a lot of basketball players. It's been their childhood dream. Yeah, you've been drafting for decades to get there. You've put, you've invested so much, your body, your mind, time, sacrifices. I know players that are paid for free, that are like, mm. yo, it's covered my flights, and they've, yeah, they've covered my flights, and I get two meals a day, zero pounds, zero euros, zero dollars, because they just want the opportunity, and there's a, don't get, don't get me twisted. There's a lot of fans in the PBL as well who make more money than the players. Yeah. And they work a regular job, yeah. like regular, like I'm not talking like a high wage paying job, regular jobs. And it's, I think it's something that should change because I hear about leagues over, over, overseas where they've got like minimum salaries, like yeah. a minimum salary to be able to survive in the real world. Do you know what I mean? Even if that's like yeah. 2K a month or 1500 a month or whatever, <clears throat> it's calculated so that this player <clears throat> doesn't have to get a job in the summer. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And because I guess if we had if we had that, even just a, a players association or some sort of representation, you'd get yeah. that, wouldn't you? Or you'd at least start the conversation of getting that. The conversation's been started, but I don't know how we'd ever get there because... The teams in the BBL, who do they answer to? They answer to each other. Yeah. But the team don't actually answer to anyone above them where if the players have got an issue, the players' association, it can have a, a conference with the BBL and then representatives from each team yeah. come. Now, nah, it's the players' associations having meetings with whoever wants to turn up from the teams. And yeah. there's so many players now compared to spots. You could probably replace a player. But that's why I got I got into a little bit of kerfuffle when I saw the investment from um, 777 and I asked yeah. a simple question. I said, all right, cool. A million or however much has been put into the league. How much are British players getting? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because we live in this country. Everyone's talking about, oh, you guys are the backbone of the league. We need to have good British players. All right, cool. Make there be a domestic player minimum salary like yeah. they have in other countries. 2K a month for each British player who's supposed to be the core, the yeah. backbone, we want to stay for years and let's change the Americans and the Europeans but keep our British core. Mate, the amount of players that are now getting to the age of, they're not 21 anymore. Yeah. You're 25, 26. You're in a relationship. You want to get married. You want to buy a house. You're better off getting a regular job because a lot of the time, the team's respect gets put on the imports anyway. Mm. that's where most of the money's going what are you do doing do you think more? that the whole sort of focus on the British core British spine of the basketball game in this country is mm-hmm. kind of part of the whole GB Olympic rhetoric narrative type of thing um so it just it just seems that whenever there's an Olympics or a Commonwealth Games um obviously and I know you've represented um your country uh, in in is it the Commonwealth Games yeah and I went to yeah. Uh, um, well. So there always seems to be a, a sort of a, a focus on basketball and all that type of stuff. But then when you peel back the layers and you look at like the lack of funding there and the the fact that there was a video online that said the, the GB team only qualified for the Olympics because it was the host nation and all this stuff. Like it seems like the focus on British players is a is a is just a narrative that kind of rears its head every time there's an Olympics or a Commonwealth Games. Other than that, they're not. They don't. You don't really hear anything about it. It's a myth. It's a facade. Smoke and mirrors. Because if it's that serious, and we want to put your money where your mouth is, yeah, 
put your money where your mouth is. Where's your money going? Americans and Europeans. And the worst thing is, yeah, I'm I'm British through and through, and I love us. I would like I, I think I put a tweet the other day where I said I will make a, a team of British players only, um, of unsigned players that could compete and be like a top four team in the BBL now. Yeah, there's hella players like we've got great players over here yeah. who deserve the money, deserve the respect, deserve the time, deserve all of that because, like I know back in the day before the rest of the world caught up with basketball, Americans were it. They were. Yeah. But being American really doesn't mean anything now because you've got good players from all over the world. you got Puerto Ricans who are probably better than some Americans. Do you know what I mean? Like, America's, yeah. it's massive, but that doesn't mean everyone from that country that decides to touch basketball is great. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We've got a lot of great British players who deserve to have that same level of respect. I feel personally. Yeah. And I mean, do you think it is that fascination with the NBA and the American game that is the reason that we have so many American players in the league? I don't even think it's really a fascination. I think it's an old time mentality because yeah. if the real was a fascination, yeah, then we'd, we'd try and copy the NBA model yeah. just for yeah, our yeah. in general. But we, we don't. So it can't be an NBA fascination because when you're fascinated with something, you're obsessed with like the whole thing. Yeah, you know what I mean, we're not obsessed because look at how we run the league, and yeah. even like down to our marketing and all that stuff doesn't doesn't show me obsession because I now look at the league not from a player standpoint, from yeah. from the outside, from, from an outsider, where I'm like, if if why not? I was huge. I'm not investing in the BBL for what? Yeah. Wasting my money? Do you know what I mean? And I you have to think of it not as a basketball lover because. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should just be a great product. And then a basketball is the cherry. And our basketball is really good. We can live in hope. We can live in hope. Um, I really appreciate your time. Uh, I know you've had a busy day. Um, and I wish you nothing but the best with, uh, with your new business. Uh, we'll be keeping an eye on that. And any support we can give uh, with that, mate, that would be, uh, that would be my pleasure to do that. Definitely, man. Thanks for having me on here, man. Definitely. Uh, I'm ju- I'm, all I'm trying to do, I, I, I was explaining this to Chloe Gaynor the other day, is like this whole courtsider thing was just born out of frustration, which, you know, you obviously share in that this game is just fucking massively underfunded and it's just, it there's the potential be. there. It's just, it's getting people to give a fuck, yeah, quite honestly. To be the, one of the number one participated sports in the country. Yeah. And just at grassroots level, and there's no funding at that level. There's no funding at professional level. Yeah, it's just like, wh- like, what's the point of people even playing it? Yeah, obviously we know because we love it, but in terms of like having the perfect business model or having the perfect product, yeah, but then not doing anything great with it, I just think it's mad sad. I had a meeting with them and I said to them respectfully your you guys like your basketball england you're like the top of the top yeah for our sport like you you're are like the FA. yeah like the fa you're up there why are you guys so focused on the lower levels yeah because our top levels who you guys when people think basketball england you think elite yeah. immediately when you think of team england you're thinking of olympics yeah, Commonwealth yeah. game, yeah. elite athletes. You're thinking and that is what everyone wants to get to, but for basketball, it's it's community level. Yeah, like why? Like Team England athletics, yeah, it probably has a little bit of a community base and yeah. a focus, but they're focused on elite basketball wise. We're not focused on elite, and we still manage to medal boys and girls. So it's just like, bro. Use that success which we've got and maximize elite because when you maximize elite, people with money care about elite and then it should filter its way down. Instead, you're trying to give money at the bottom, hoping yeah. that it grows like a tree. Nah, it's not no, going nah, to it doesn't work like that. I mean, I come from a football family originally, and like when when I saw Alan Shearer in the FA Cup final 
that made me want to go out and play football and buy For the real? kits and you know immerse myself going buy a ticket, a season ticket, and all that stuff. I didn't get that from going and watching a Sunday league team or a community project. Is is amazing. Think they are. Fifteen like, football in Newcastle. You, you, like I watch LeBron James and I'm like shit. I mean I can't play basketball to save my life, but I watch him. And I watch, I mean, like, my probably my favourite players of all time, probably Jordan, John Wall, LeBron, uh, mm-hmm. and um, what do you call him? Oh, man. Uh, no, 77, plays for the Mavericks. Oh, Luca. Luca Doncic, yeah. yeah. Um, and I watch them, and it just, it makes us just want to immerse myself in basketball even more. So as a young kid, if I'm, if I'm seeing that on my doorstep, on a... Saturday afternoon or Friday night or whatever, it makes me want to go out and it would make me want to go out and buy the local teams' jerseys and do all that stuff. Plymouth jersey to house parties, street parties, all summer. Yeah. I was wearing actual game jerseys because they actually looked cool. People were like, yo, where can I get one of them? You actually can't. Yeah, people were yeah. like, yo, watch Patriots. I'm like, oh, Plymouth. People, but obviously, people know about basketball jerseys. That's why Eddie yeah. Elliott, the hooping and looting, he's sick. Yeah. And I mean, I've been spoke about um, getting BBL jerseys out there, but what is the point in getting, like, I guarantee, I've been in London, yeah, and I've saw people wearing NBA jerseys of players that basketball fans don't even know who that player is. Yeah. So as a basketball fan who's a fan of the Lakers, we don't know who the 10th man on the roster is. But yeah, yeah I'm seeing people walking around in their jersey, and I guarantee they don't know that player's yeah. stats or anything. They just like the colour and they're like, oh, I grabbed this. It was my size. I'm going to rock it. Yeah. BBL, for mm. one, you can barely get our jerseys. Two, no one's rocking them, but obviously people want to wear jerseys. People want to wear basketball clothes because basketball is in all the hip-hop videos. It's in R&B videos. You've got premiership football players rocking, copying um basketball players, you've got NBA players all over Milan Fashion Week, London Fashion Week, Paris, cross, just crossing everything. Yeah. How can we get a part of that? Because these people who are not basketball fans actually don't know the difference. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I mean, wait, do you, have you saw, uh, is it Stormzy's new video? It's got Jose Mourinho on it. Like- yeah, it was cold. I watched it and I just sat there and I shook my head and I said, it's actually a joke. Yeah, it's a That's joke. Like it's just gone too far now. Like, yeah, it's a joke. He gets it, Jose Marino. And the thing is, the whole gimmick for Jose Marino's thing was him, um, at a press release, and he wanted to complain, and he was like, "I can't because I get in trouble." That's yeah. where the whole little gimmick of "I gotta keep quiet," and now that's in culture. And Storms is one of the biggest artists in the world. We've got we've got rappers and musicians all around the world all around the UK, locally, I don't know we have a basketball league. We don't know who could be the next Stormzy because there was a time Stormzy weren't Stormzy. Yeah, yeah. That's the no. thing. I think going back to the whole British thing of like the, the older guys and the traditional stuff, if you said, take the, the Eagles, for example, if we found like a local like hip-hop rapper, um, musician, producer, whatever, in the Northeast and said, right, let's do some sort of collaboration with the mm-hmm. Eagles the majority of people would be like, well, what? We don't do that in Newcastle. This isn't, you know what I mean? Like exactly why we should do it. Yeah. Because we won't do it. So let's do it. Like we need to start doing the opposite to what we've been doing because as we say, it might have worked for a time, but now it's time to do something else. But they're not, they're not thinking like that. So I'm like, my plan with why not I, I'm just doing everything that I want to do with or without people and basketball, British basketball culture is a strong part of who I am. Like, like players now don't, like British people don't want to be American no more. We're not yeah. doing a big accent. We're proud to be British. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like, what does that actually mean in the basketball culture? Yeah. What are we actually proud to be a part of? Do you know what I mean? There I isn't, you, do you not think know? it's because it's so like, because it's not even there, that you've got the ideal opportunity of the community's got the ideal opportunity to define what that is now yep. rather than trying to like 
change it or undo it. It's like it's not there, so let's create something. Yeah, but like they don't want to, and it's wild. But I'm like, we're actually quite. Remember, but people don't understand. Like the BBL hasn't just come around; it's been around since like the eighties. It was yeah. the Carlsberg League. I was talking to Stephen um to Steve Bucknell the other day. Yeah. And like we were talking about all that, and it's like, yo, the BBL's been around forever. Yeah. It needs to keep rebranding. Look at the NBA. They got the rid of David league. Stern and got my man, the new guy. He started doing he started changing up the whole league. Yeah. David Stern was out here finding players for not wearing certain clothes. The new commissioner, he's got the NBA as a flipping runway. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not and true, all, isn't it? <laughs> how the Premiership has copied. You got yeah. all these photographers taking pictures of players' outfits when they're coming to the game. Yeah. And now all the what's his name? Um, Jack Grealish. Jack Grealish. Because yeah. of his fashion and his status, which stemmed from the NBA, he's now a Gucci athlete sponsored by Gucci. Really? Gucci. And the thing is, Gucci wants nothing to do with his actual performance as a football player. They want it, they care about his fashion sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that he is a footballer also. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about, apparently. <laughs> do you get that, that a lot? Do you, think that, do you think that's the old guard pushing back against you, saying this young kid's got any idea? Yeah, but I've got receipts and evidence to support my claims, and I also don't give a shit, to be honest, either. Like... I say what I say and I mean what I mean. And if you're not with me, then that's your own business. But I'm not speaking from a place of not being in it. I've been in the British basketball culture two decades. And when I'm talking about elite sport, I've played for GB and gone Euro basket. I played for England and gone Commonwealth. I was the face of the 2022 campaign. Like, and I was a part of the junior program growing up. So like, I've been a part of the culture every single step. But now I'm a part of other cultures yeah. and I can see where we're lacking. Not not lacking in terms of the whole picture, but yeah. a certain aspect that I'm passionate about and in, in terms of fashion and culture. I can speak on that, but there might be other people who who are great at business, who are yeah. non-basketball heads that are like, oh, we could tweak it in this segment. If we're all tweaking in, in our segments of what we know what we're talking about then the whole overall picture just ends up being so much different and so much better. Yeah. That's the end. I guess it's just keeping the conversation going, keeping people talking about it, keeping people um, aware of, of what you're doing. Um, where's the best place for people to, 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 to keep up to date with what you're doing? Would it be Twitter or Instagram? Um, or? Instagram, uh, why not I, MH, or the website, um, but even through me as well, because yeah. like I I fly the flag for why not I because I feel like I represent the message in terms that of is you sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's building right now. And any any connections I make to the outside world, I'm always gonna bring it back to British basketball because it's it's a large part of like who I am and will forever be. Uh, mate, listen, I appreciate your time. Um, and uh, let's keep chatting on Twitter. Let's keep the conversation going, mate. And uh, wish you nothing but the best. And we'll hopefully catch up soon. Now he's catch it again. Definitely, man. Love, appreciate Champion. it. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. See you later, bro. Cheers, mate.